Welcome all my fellow Washington brethren and sister. I am your man and resident Washington football team fan, Lou. Thank you for joining me here on the Washington Football Report. So, Washington added what I believe to be their final piece in this refurbished front office with the hire of new director of pro personnel, Chris Polian. Name sounds familiar. His dad is Hall of Fame general manager, Bill Polian. So uh, that name probably does resonate with most of you, probably does ring a bell, and it should. Bill Polian, his father, uh, was the architect of those Bills teams that went to four straight Super Bowls. He also was the architect of the Carolina Panthers in the mid-90s when they first became an expansion team, getting them to the NFC Championship game in just their second year in existence. And he also was the architect of the uh, Peyton Manning uh, Indianapolis Colts for about a good 15 year stretch there with Manning and, and, and Harrison and Wayne and, and Edron James and all of those guys, Dwight Freeney and Robert Mathis. That was all the doing of Bill Polian. So he's in the Hall of Fame. His son, is it too shabby himself? He was a part of that staff in Indianapolis under his dad. He ultimately got the GM job in Indianapolis. So if you're keeping score at home, this is the third former GM that Washington has hired this offseason. Remember, they filled their GM void with Robert, or excuse me, Martin Mayhew, former GM of the Detroit Lions, now our GM here in Washington. Uh, he filled the EVP of football operations job or football personnel uh, with Marty Herney, former Carolina Panthers GM. And now he's filling our director of pro personnel vacancy with another former GM of the Indianapolis Colts, this time Chris Polian. So uh, you see what Rivera's doing here. He's looking for experience. When you put those guys, those three guys and their amount of experience together, you're talking about over seven decades of experience in this league, okay? In some way, shape, or form. So I, I think we all see what Rivera is trying to do and what was wrong with the, the way it was set up last year when he got here. He didn't want to ruffle too many feathers. He had just gotten here. The staff was already here. The, the, all the ball, ball, different balls in different avenues, pro personnel and, and the draft and, and college scouting, all that stuff was already set in motion when he got here. He didn't want to do anything to uproot any of that, so he just left it alone. And now he's going to go ahead and get all his guys in here. And at the end of the day, this is the last time I'm going to say this. I'm going to put this to bed because it really doesn't matter anymore, but I still feel like I need to say it. I, I think he didn't want... Kyle Smith to get all of the credit. If you really look at what fans were doing, Kyle Smith was the only holdover from the, the, the last regime in the front office, that is. And he was the one guy that we cling to and said, hey, if not for Kyle Smith, we don't have this guy and that guy. You can go down the list of the first round picks. You can go down the list of all the guys that we may have gotten in the fifth or the third or the, the sixth or whatever the case may be. We've accredited all of that to Kyle Smith. And I don't think Ron liked that shit at all, especially when people started giving Kyle all the credit. Because remember, Kyle was in control of everything in terms of the, the draft, pro, pro personnel, everything. He was... In over the entire personnel staff, player personnel. So pro side and college sky, side. So we were giving him credit for everything. Man, that J.D. McKissick pickup, goddamn, that Logan Thomas pickup. Woo, he's killing it, man. Cornelius Lucas, that was a diamond in the rough. You know, we were giving him credit for everything, and Ron did not like it. So Ron go, went ahead, wiped the, the slate clean because all of these guys that he's brought in got to answer to Ron. And, and it's not to say that Kyle Smith didn't have to answer to Ron, but we were going to give Kyle Smith all the credit, regardless of whether it was his decision or not. We're going to give him the credit because he had been here longer and his name rung a bell with most fans. Now you wipe the slate clean. If anything happens, we're going to charge it to Rivera's account because it's coach-centric 
And nobody here is a familiar face. So we're going to just give Ron Rivera the credit. And I think that's the way he preferred, honestly speaking. And that's okay. We've all got egos. I don't have any problem with it. As long as it's successful, who gives a shit, right? Anyway, Chris Polian, back to the reason we're here. Chris Polian was in Jacksonville, all right? Last, let's call it six or seven years. As their pro personnel scout. And he did a phenomenal job. Um, on his resume it is one of the best two off-season strings I've ever seen defensively put together for any uh, general manager or uh, pro personnel uh, director in recent memory. I mean, if you look at what the Jaguars were able to do in 2017 when they went to the AFC Championship game, and you think about who was the starting quarterback of that team, one Blake Bortles, okay? How good did that defense have to be to get them to where they ultimately got, which was seven minutes away from making a trip to the Super Bowl? After going on the road and beating Pittsburgh and almost going on the road and beating New England and the Tom Brady-led Patriots, that defense was outstanding. And it's not just what Chris Polian did from a free agency standpoint and, and shaking and moving, making trades and things of that nature. You also got to give credit to their GM, um, who I, I used to talk about all the time as a guy that really got it in Jacksonville, who just got fired. But what happened was they had some really good drafts. The Jags were trash every year. So David Caldwell, their general manager, put together a string of really good drafts with a ton of defensive talent, and they were right there, okay, right there on the cusp in 2015 of starting to really make some noise defensively. Now, they, they were far from where they needed to be offensively, but they were getting close. And then they started adding pieces back in 2016 and into 2017, like Calais Campbell, like um, uh, Jackson, Malik Jackson, like uh, A.J. Boye. Um, and then Barry Church was a, a, a gem that he was able to wrestle away from the Dallas Cowboys at the safety position that kind of tied everything together. Paul Puzlesny, another guy in free agency that they signed away from the Buffalo Bills. That was way before um, 2017, but it's going back a ways. But again, all on the pro side of things, all Chris Polian. So a lot of credit needs to be given to Chris Polian and what he was able to do after getting to Jacksonville. I think it was back in 2012, maybe, and staying there until 2019 when uh, that whole entire crew was fired and let go of. But um, he was a big part of why they were able to get to the AFC Championship because that defense was dominant. So one of the most dominant defenses we've seen in the last seven years or so in the NFL. So uh, this guy can identify talent and good fits for your team. Now the locker room chemistry, I, I don't know if, they, if he really factors into that or not because they had a terrible locker room in Jacksonville. Uh, but... It was talented, and it got him all the way to the AFC Championship game. And I've already told you, I'm not really uh, one for a bunch of choir boys, you know, and Boy Scouts. I, I want winners. I want guys that want to win. It, it may not be pretty all the time. You want good character guys in your locker room if they can play, all right? Uh, but at the end of the day, Chris Polian did a hell of a job in Jacksonville, and we're hoping he can do the same here in Washington. So I think that's the final piece in Ron Rivera's new revamped front office. You've got a guy that's supposed to be really sharp on the um, college side of things and Martin Mayhew and even Marty Herney to maybe a lesser degree is supposed to be a guy that has an eye for talent uh, from the you know, college ranks. And now you got a guy on the pro side of things in Chris Polian um, kind of tying all of this together. And so you got Rob Rogers as the, the cap guy and the guy that kind of, you know, is really, I think, the the Straw, the straw that stirs this entire organization because if you listen to Ron last year, if not for Rob Rogers, I don't know how he would have gotten through the year. So everything's brand new and uh, we'll see how it all works. But I think this is the final piece of the puzzle in that new front office in Washington with the hiring of Chris Polian, son of Bill Polian. Again, let's not go the nepotism route. This guy has cut his teeth in this league for over two decades and has done a phenomenal job, and he knows what the hell he's doing. So um, I'm anxious to see what he does. He's got a lot of work to do, and he doesn't have a lot of time to get up to speed. 
He was out of football last year after being relieved of his duties in Jacksonville after the 2019 season. He was out of work for 2020. He's back in the biz. Hopefully, he's been keeping up with everything, and he's ready to jump right in because we need some things in free agency, and uh, hopefully he'll be ready to pull the trigger on some things and get this ball rolling in the right direction and add to what we started to build last season. One more thing before we get out of here. I wanted to talk about Daniel Jeremiah's Mock Draft 2.0. Told you we're going to see a bunch of these uh, prior to April's draft. He's going to come out with a bunch of these. You're going to have Mel Kuyper with his, Todd McShay with his. They're going to be everywhere. Uh, but I'm, I'm more of a Daniel Jeremiah guy myself. So uh, I talked about his 1.0 mock draft when he released his first mock draft. And he had Washington taking Kadarius Toney, wide receiver out of Florida, in his first mock draft. Well, his 2.0 came out. And I think he had a chance. To, I told you, we're not taking a receiver in the draft in the first round because we're going to get a receiver in free agency. I think he kind of figured that out because he made an amendment in his 2.0. Now, at 19, he's got Washington taking Christian Derrishaw, um, a guy that is extremely talented out of um, Virginia Tech. Left tackle, big kid, 6'5", 315. Um, I wouldn't be mad at that. I, I don't, I think people underestimate how good Ron Rivera feels about the offensive line and how they played last year. I don't think the offensive line was terrible. Could they have been better? Absolutely. But I, I think there's enough stuff that may steer them away from drafting a tackle this early. And not to say that they won't draft one at some point, but don't forget, they, draft, they drafted last year uh, Sadiq Charles. I still don't know what they have in store for him, whether that move to guard is a permanent one, or if they were just doing that to see if the kid could give them something, or you know, because he had no offseason at tackle. They were done with that experiment for now because they had enough guys and bodies over there at left tackle that they were going to try to get something out of him at guard, sort of like what the Dolphins did uh, when they first drafted um, uh, Laramie Tunzel, had him at guard, knowing, uh, knowing all, all that entire time that he was going to eventually be the left tackle of the future. So... I, we don't know if they're going to kick him back outside at, at tackle and give him a chance next year as camp rolls around. You still have two guys that played significant snaps for you at left tackle um, for coming back from last year in Cornelius Lucas and, of course, Jaron Christian. So I don't know if tackle is a need that has to be thrusted to the front of the line that you have to pull the trigger on at 19. Are there more pressing needs? that maybe tickle your fancy at 19, but that one, this one, makes a lot more sense than the Kadarius Tony pick at 19 in his mock draft 1.0. So in any event, um, I think if they went offensive line, I wouldn't be upset, but I think there's going to be some really talented football players on the board at 19 that I would like to see them go in a different direction. But I can tell you this, a lot of you keep talking about Xavier Collins, Xavier Collins, he wasn't even in not to say that DJ's got it all figured out, but he didn't even make it in the first round of his mock draft, just so you're aware, okay? So I don't know what's going to happen. I don't know what, and this is why free agency is so important because we'll know more. We'll have a much clearer picture of what needs to be done after free agency. Watson could go out, get a middle linebacker, and go and get a wide receiver in free agency, and we're looking like, okay, well, don't need any of those guys in the first round could change everything. Could make it a pick where they just say, hey, best player available. And if that's a wide receiver, if it's a tackle, if it's a guard, if it's a corner, if it's a tight end, then they take them. Don't have any problem with that either, but just throwing it out there. Mock draft 2.0 for DJ has Washington selecting an offensive tackle, Christian Derrishaw, out of Virginia Tech. So, uh, we'll talk more about all these things on Thursday night. We'll be live for Washington Football Report live. Until then, I'm your man, Louis T. Remember, I am a Washington fan etched in burgundy and gold. My Washington spirit will never die. Washington spirit will never fold until we meet again. Hail to our beloved Washington football team. I will see you guys on Thursday night, 8.30 p. Like always, until then, enjoy the rest of your week. Hopefully, you'll join me for the Louis T. Network podcast on Wednesday. Until then, I'm your man, Louis T. Signing off. Have a good one.